Do epidural PRP injections help for radiculopathy? So when I see a patient for radiculopathy, often they've been working at this for a while. They've rested the back, they've been doing medication, they've tried physical therapy without as much relief as they'd like. So typically an interventional pain physician would offer something like an epidural steroid injection. But personally, I would avoid injecting steroid into myself knowing the risk and harm associated with corticosteroids. Even a single epidural steroid injection can increase someone's risk for a vertebral compression fracture. One alternative to corticosteroids that we have as of right now is platelet-rich plasma or PRP. The patients that I've done PRP epidurals on for radiculopathy have done well. It's not any miraculous procedure with 100% success rate, but we do see some good relief with it. Anecdotally, we see patients that have an, a PRP epidural injection instead of a corticosteroid injection for radiculopathy are less likely to end up moving on to see a neurosurgeon. So the big question is what is the supporting evidence for PRP epidural injections? The reality is there's only a handful of studies out there for evaluating the use of PRP as an alternative to corticosteroids for epidural injections. Uh, one of the earlier studies was done in 2016 more of a pilot study, evaluating PRP for an epidural injection for radiculopathy. So a couple small recent studies. In 2020, there was a study, uh, a randomized double-blinded controlled pilot study of about 50 patients. The diagnosis for this study was degenerative spinal pain, so it wasn't specific to radiculopathy. Uh, they did a caudal epidural, so this is where they place the medication right at the lower end of the sacrum and spread it up, so kind of a, just a blast shotgun type of approach. So not as specific as what I would typically do, selecting a, a specific nerve root foramen to, to put the medication in. They followed up their patients at one, three, and six months. They compared steroid to the PRP. So both groups saw an improvement in pain. The corticosteroid had a quicker onset of the pain relief, so they did a little bit better at one month. And the PRP did seem to do a little bit better at the three and six months. And it showed significant improvement compared to the steroid at six months in, in their functional outcomes. So another study in 2020, this was a non-randomized comparative study of a CT guided interlaminar. Again, not the approach that I typically use, an interlaminar steroid versus PRP injection. And this one was, they were focused specifically on radiculopathy pain. This study only showed a, a six week follow up. And at that time frame, they saw that PRP was comparable to steroid. And they did comment that the PRP was likely safer than the steroid. So ultimately, we need bigger and better trials to really confidently say how PRP compares to steroid. As of right now, it is an alternative to steroid if for whatever reason the patient doesn't want to do steroid or, or that's a contraindication. So a PRP epidural injection is definitely something to consider when looking at different options for treating radiculopathy. Until next time.